a boisterous welcome home for Everton after away wins at Southampton and Tottenham, which have extended their unbeaten run to 18 matches. The sequence began with a victory over today's opponent Sunderland at Roker Park on Boxing Day, and despite two Cup semi-finals coming up next week, the supporters here want the championship most of all. There's a change at left back where John Bailey starts his first match since New Year's Day in place of the suspended Pat Van den Howe. Gary Stevens and Andy Gray both passed fitness tests this morning. In midfield, Paul Bracewell faces the club whose supporters voted him their player of the year last season. Indeed, on the Saturday of Easter weekend last April, Bracewell helped Sunderland beat Everton and then to escape relegation. And Sunderland look to be facing that annual dogfight again. They've been badly hit by injuries. Howard Gale, David Hodgson and Mark Proctor still missing. Peter Daniel plays with a broken nose, although captain Sean Elliott is welcomed back at number six. Referee this afternoon is Vic Callow from Solihull. Sunderland start the match in the famous red and white stripes. They've had two home defeats over the last few days and badly need the points. And obviously, their supporters who followed them down wondering could they provide a surprise this afternoon. Ratcliffe, Trevor Stephen, and Barry Venison back to Bennett. Sunderland playing with Walker and Wallace pushed forward, and the others, I would think, coming from midfield. Walker with the throw to Berry, back to Walker. Curled in, Wallace was there! Oh, what a start! And Walker's cross for Wallace, who headed that in at the near post in the second minute. Well, the travelling fans from the northeast couldn't have wished for a better start. Ian Wallace clipped that in with his head on the near post and it's the first goal that Everton have let in in the league here at Goodison Park since New Year's Day. Howard Kendall's team unbeaten since December the 22nd. The Everton, the toast of the North in midweek, suddenly find themselves a goal behind at home to a team at the other end of the table. What a bad ball by Elliott. Straight to Trevor Stephen. And here comes Stevens. And Sharp Gray. And Elliott half away. How did they survive that? It's still in play. Bracewell. And now Bailey with the strike. Mountfield to Stephen and back to Stevens. And on by Reed to Sharp. And here's Bracewell to Sheedy. Away by Elliott, Bracewell. Low in, and Gray's there, no! Bracewell drove it across, Sharp lunged first, Gray went in second, the ball went wide. Here's Bailey. And now it's Bracewell. And Sharp. And Reed. Stevens is square. Corner. Gary Stevens with a firm drive. Turned round by the angle. Flicked on and a chance for Mountfield and it was scrambled away. Derek Mountfield's header and look at the break with Wallace. He's got Walker on the far side but he's offside. Much to the relief of Everton who would have gone two down there. But for the flag. So. One minute it was Mountfield with a header at the other end. Which was scrambled away by Sunderland and with Mountfield stranded they then launched a counter attack. And Wallace played the ball in for Walker, who was unhappy to see the linesman flagging for offside. 
And as Mountfield and Co. push up to look for the equaliser, the danger of a second goal on the counter for Sunderland is apparent. Here's Sheedy, and now Stephen. And uh, Sharp is there. Stevens lobbed forward for Gray. He's so brave. And he's absolutely flat out. Everton are appealing to the referee that Gray was bought by the goalkeeper, but a corner's been given. Sheedy. And Gray again. And this time he's crushed it against the outside of the goal and then collided with the boards. Stevens chipped the ball in. It looked to be drifting out on that far side from our angle, but Gray will always chase a lost cause. Well, on again for Reed. Well played. Reed's cross Gray. What a fantastic goal! Beautiful goal. 34 minutes gone, and Everton produced one right out of the textbook. Grace well fed Reed on the right, and Reed's approach work there was sheer class. The cross that came in was low and inviting, and Andy Gray is the person to throw himself at those and score with a diving header. So the score's level, and Everton's possession pays off. Sharp is up with Chisholm, here's Bracewell. Goes back again to Stephen. Gray's there again! or so, then it has to be the career of Andy Gray. You don't have to jump six feet in the air to score goals with your head. Gray will go for them at any height. Wallace, Venison. Walker's closing in, and Mountfield Walker, and Stevens off the line. Brilliant clearance, he's injured, but it saved a goal, there's no question about that. Sunderland would have equalised, but for the bravery of Gary Stevens. Stevens to Bracewell. And in for Stephen. Good turn. And a chance again. <laughs> Stephen, a lovely little ball in. It was Sheedy who went to try and finish it off and couldn't. And the whistle goes for half-time. With applause reverberating around this famous stadium. Mostly in honour of a centre-forward whose performance there was at a classic mould. Two majestic headers by Andy Gray put Everton in front after they'd gone behind in the second minute. Well, since January the 1st, 1984, Everton have played 82 competitive matches and lost just 11. And people say, what was the turning point? And they think rather unkindly back to that Kevin Brock back pass at Oxford. I prefer to think the signing of Andy Gray and his influence at Goodison Park and on and off the field was a very big factor indeed.
Stephen away from Pickering. Yes! Another superb goal. 53 minutes gone. And Everton are 3-1 up. Bracewell, with that pass, picked out Stephen. He did his job on the ball and finished in explosive fashion. A fabulous goal again by Everton. And this is now becoming one of their best performances. Certainly their finishing is of championship material. A marvellous move that was when you look back on it. The ball which Bracewell produced from left to right would have done justice to any grade of football, international level or whatever. And so too would the skill and the purpose and the sheer power in the shot of Trevor Stephen. Elias, oh, goodness me, nearly got that away to Reed. Bracewell, and they're in trouble, Sunderland. Gray to Sheedy. Sharp, and I think it's the man that put through his own goal on the day of the Milk Cup final, Gordon Chisholm. Well, that was bad luck, really, although Everton had Sunderland on the run from the moment they won the ball in midfield, and Gray found Sheedy. The cross was intended for Sharp, but it looked to me as if Chisholm, trying to cut it out, put the ball into his own net after 70 minutes. And that, believe it or not, was Everton's 100th goal of the season. The first one back in August was a bizarre own goal by Grobelaar in the charity shield, and the 100th is an own goal by Chisholm. Berry. Bailey in front of Cook. Oh, that's some ball to Gray. And Sharp is free. Oh, would have been offside, I think, anyway. Stephen. Good effort! Oh. It was a great shot. But what a good pass from left back by John Bailey. Raking ball right across the pitch to Andy Gray on the far side. It came back eventually to Stephen, and that shot whistled wide of the far post. The crowd figure this afternoon at Goodison Park is just under 36,000. an unusual shot. He hasn't grown a tail, Neville Southall. That's his cap in the back of his shorts, just in case that sun comes out again. They're looking more and more like champions as they go into a week with two cup semi-finals. Everton take three points here to confirm their position as championship leaders. A tasteful display of poise and thrust by Trevor Stephen, culminating in his goal. The fourth was Everton's 100th of the season in all competitions, and indeed, they are now unbeaten in all competitions in 19 matches. No wonder the Goodison faithful applaud them off the pitch. And perhaps we should thank Sunderland too and Ian Wallace for that explosive start which provoked Everton into an exceptional performance. And the reception given to Andy Gray was well merited. And despite what you may have read recently, anyone inside the game over the last 30 years will tell you that the game is not as brutal with far less villains. But it also has fewer totally courageous players, which is why it's worth pausing to reflect on Everton and Andy Gray. I get the biggest thrill in the world out of seeing that ball hit the back of the net. I've had it since I was 14 or 15. I've still got it at 29 and I hope I've still got it at 39 started my career, if anyone had told me that when I was 29 I would have every domestic honour, then I'd have been well pleased with that. And uh, I've got a chance. I'm going to do everything in my power to make that come true and, and give the Goodison supporters a league championship.